welcome to the Leadership Lounge, where we explore and experiment with actions that help you amplify your impact in the workplace. Okay, today's topic on the table is happiness, this elusive term that we're all searching for, but really wondering how to get there. How do we get more of happiness into the workplace and into our lives? And today we have a very special guest. She actually has investing her time, energy, and brilliance in researching happiness. So I want to welcome Jillian Mandich to our show today. And uh, let me just... Here we go. And Jillian is actually completing, completing her PhD at Western University in rehabilitation science. But what she's really, really interested in is happiness. So she also is the co-host of the Holistic Health Diary podcast and TV show. And she's a guest expert, uh, guest at numerous radio and TV shows. So Jillian, great to have you here today. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much. I'm really happy to be here. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So happiness. Let's talk about this. I mean, this happiness is this elusive term that everyone wants more of. But what is happiness, Jillian? And why should we care? <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's, that's such an amazing question and a really great place to start. Because one of the interesting things about happiness is that when I say it and we're having this conversation about it, you have general understanding of what happiness is and I do as well and we can kind of relate to it but to actually nail down what it means can be really tricky because happiness is unique just like every single one of us so the way I define happiness is it's kind of a two-parter so, so happiness is kind of like your general satisfaction with life combined with how you're feeling on a moment to moment basis because I'm sure everyone watching can can relate to the fact that their happiness wavers up and down every single day we're not like always super happy all the time like really best day ever every day but it kind of it fluctuates and so happiness the definition has to reflect the fact that it's not always high high highs or low low lows that it is this transient thing but it's kind of when you combine it with your sort of satisfaction of life overall, it puts it a little bit more into perspective. How can we measure happiness? You know, if it's something that we can only really feel moment to moment, how can we as individuals measure how happy we are in any moment versus the next? If you measure the same person over a different period of time, asking them their own experience of happiness, you can get a general idea of what that is for them. You can't really compare it to other people, but you can use like a self-rating scale. The other really interesting thing about happiness is it's correlated with a bunch of other different things. So things like gratitude or mindfulness or things like that. So you can ask questions about things that are related and use it as a proxy to then guess or sort of make a better estimate of what the happiness of someone's happiness might be so it's, okay. it's kind of um, interesting you can get at it a couple different ways but at the end of the day absolutely it's really important to get a general understanding of of how to measure it or what it actually means but we all know what happiness feels like and so connecting inwards and bringing it back into you is really, really key because I find, especially with happiness, people tend to look outwards, something they have to go get, something they have to achieve, something they have to go find. When in reality, if you flip it and you look inside and connect with that, we, it's all there for all of us. And so bringing it back within ourself is, is probably the most important in terms of understanding what it is or measuring it or anything like that. So that is such a great point because so often we hear, I'll be happy when, you know, I'll be yes. happy when I get that promotion. I'll be happy when my boss gets the hell out of here and I get somebody new in. I'll be happy when that great guy comes along. Like what tips or how can we actually focus on being happy now without some of the external circumstances? You know, do you have any advice? Well, what I often encourage people to do is be, bring your awareness to happiness because that is the first step. You have to know what you're looking for or what you're thinking about before you can notice it, right? You don't mm -hmm. notice what you don't notice. So That's right. That's right. So when you look at happiness, for example, it's starting to realize, okay, I might not. So say, for example, you really want to get a promotion at work. And so if I work really hard and I get this job done, then I'm going to get this promotion and that's going to make me happy. Chances are, say you do all that and you get the promotion, then it's on to the next oh, well, now I can get another promotion or, oh, I want to make more money or I want more vacation or whatever it is. There's always something more. And when we recognize that, we can realize, okay, well, if I'm always going to be looking for something more, then if, if that's how I determine I'm going to get happiness, I'm never going to get there. 
But when you flip it and you realize, okay, I can have happiness right now and I can choose to bring that along my work journey and be happy along the way. Sort of, you know, coming back to the idea that happiness isn't like a destination. Yes. It's it's along the way every single step. And so in terms of how do I, you're like, okay, that's great, Jillian, awesome. But what does that actually look like for me? Right, right. right. I'm sitting here at work. <laughs> I've got a huge deadline and you want me to be happy? Really? <laughs> exactly. That was, that I, that's, was going through my head. <laughs> that's, that's the reality, you know, of how we think. But if you bring your awareness to happiness and you think, okay, I'm in my office right now. What do I like around here? What are some things that really make me feel alive? What are some things around here that, you know, make my heart beat a little bit faster, that draw the corners of my mouth up towards my ears a little bit more and noticing those sort of things because happiness is like a muscle. So just like when you go to the gym to work your bicep because you want like big guns, you can start to work your happiness muscle and it will grow. And just like when you go into the gym, you can do a bicep curl, you can do a hammer curl, you can do a pull up. There's lots of different ways to activate that bicep muscle, for example. There are a lot of different ways that we can activate our happiness muscle, and that can be different for different people. But starting to do little things over time, it starts to build. And finding one thing that makes you smile or makes you feel that happiness feeling, whatever that is for you. And then tomorrow, notice two things and then three things. And it really it really builds like that because happiness, happiness is a lifestyle thing, right? It's not something like, we can't go on like a crash happiness diet. It just doesn't work. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Gratitude awesome. is a really huge one. Gratitude and happiness are highly correlated. So what that means is that people that are more grateful tend to be happier people. Okay. And, and I, I love sharing this one research study that was done. So when you think of a, a lot of people want to win the lottery, right? Yes. And they think, okay, <laughs> if it's that, if then again, if I win the lottery, then I'll have a lot of money and then I'll be happy. Right. And so some researchers went out and they actually studied that. They're like, okay, is this true? And what they found was not surprisingly, someone that wins the lottery, you see a huge spike in their happiness. But in the study, what they actually did was follow those people for six months. And over that six month period, they saw a steady decline in the lottery winner's happiness over that six month period. And one of the reasons for that is this thing called hedonic adaptation. And what that means is we tend to adapt to our life circumstances. So over time, having that money doesn't seem to make us as happy as it once did because we get used to it. Or, you know, we're buying these toys and stuff around us and then we get used to it. And, and it doesn't bring us that joy and that happiness every single day. Okay. Now, in the same study, what they also did was they followed a second group of people. And the second group of people started what's called a gratitude practice. And so they took time, just a few minutes every single day, to notice things that they were grateful for, to think about them and write them down. And over time, those people with the gratitude practice saw a steady incline in their happiness, <clears throat> excuse me, throughout the six month period. At the end of the six month, they looked at both groups. And what they found was that the people that had the gratitude practice were significantly happier than the lottery winners. See, that's awesome. <laughs> right? <laughs> that's awesome. It's free. It's accessible to all of us. We can do it every single day. We all have a few, we can all choose to make time for a few minutes every single day to think about things that we're grateful for and knowing that when you do that you'll be happier than if you won the lottery after like that's a big win right exactly stop wasting money on those tickets right just mm -hmm. buy a little journal and and it's about making it a ritual isn't it like, yeah one thing i've started yes, to I do this past year is a gratitude journal right before i go to bed so i write mm -hmm. down three things i'm grateful for in the day that's just gone by and it, and it really just creates this time for you to reflect and to think about wow today was actually an awesome day maybe something yeah. went wrong but three things did go right and to feel that happiness and i've noticed that when i go to sleep in that kind of mode of happiness you wake up in the same state mm -hmm. you know so it's really important to create a ritual and to create just like you said it doesn't take long and it's free just create, exactly make it a ritual one of my favorite quotes from thomas edison is he said never go to sleep without a request to your subconscious mind oh right powerful. and yeah. so i'm very aware of that and so and i and I go to bed, I choose to think about a happy thought before I go to bed because that's what I want to take with me while I sleep. And, and you know, for, for everyone out there, that's something that you could try tonight. Just try it, see what happens. And so that's focusing huge. on happiness really impacts a lot of other areas of your life at the same time, how you, how you cope with stress, how you sleep, your health, your personal relationships, all of those things 
are impacted by your happiness. And see, that's really important for all the managers, the VPs, the CEOs who are listening to this. Sometimes they think, well, if, you're, if your organization is going through a lot of change and your employees are feeling stressed, they're tr trying to find that work-life balance, wondering what their future is, and there's a lot of stress on them. You know, should we really be investing in time and energy and talking about happiness? But it, what I'm hearing from you is that it matters, right? It can oh. lessen the effects of negativeness. And I'm sure it, it adds to more productive employees, too. So can you tell us a little bit about why managers, what's in it for them? Why should senior management care about the happiness of their employees and trying to create a happier atmosphere? Oh, ab this is a really fantastic topic because it's huge. If you look at happiness, happy. So people tend to think one of the sort of the misconceptions that I most commonly hear in terms of happiness is that it's a selfish act, that mm -hmm. thinking about happiness is me, 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 I, 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 you know, ego, ego, ego. When in reality, the research proves that it's actually the exact opposite of that. Mm -hmm. So especially in a workplace setting, what you'll find is that people that are happier, they tend to get along with their colleagues more. They tend to be more cooperative. They're better listeners. They work better in teams. They are, are more altruistic. They spend more time uh, doing charity work and donating money to charity. They're more creative. They're better problem solvers. All of these skills that as a manager or as anyone, you want to be a, on a team like that, and you want to show up as a team member with all of those things. And if you, and so recognizing that how you show up in the workplace affects everybody else. And also, you know, being aware of, of people that you want to gravitate towards, people that you want to spend time with, happier people, people that lift you up, people that make you more productive, people that inspire you at work, and, you know, focusing on spending the time with them and also showing up the way you want other people to show up for you. There's a great quote by Maya Angelou saying, people will not always remember what you did or what you said, but they will always remember how they, you made them feel, right? And I think what you're really talking about here is that we have the opportunity every day and every moment to be who we want to be and, mm -hmm. and create the culture of the, you know, we create that environment at, in the workplace so that we can retain the right people, we can get the right people in our organization, and at the end of the day, people are happier, they're more productive, they're more collaborative, and they're able to amplify their impact in the workplace. And that also spills over into their personal lives, right? So Absolutely. And, and being mindful that we can change how we feel in an instant. Just because we feel a certain way right now does not mean that we're going to feel the same way in the next moment or the next moment. And we can choose that. If you're tired at work and your email is out of control and you're just like, oh, you're feeling really sluggish, you can sit up tall, you can take a big breath and you can change how you feel by changing your physical position, by changing your mindset, by, you know, getting up and doing like some jumping jacks, whatever it is, no, when you're aware of the fact of your presence, how you're feeling, you can change it in an instant if you choose that. So even in the workplace, when you're doing things that, you know, like email that can be really tedious and can get out of control in this big, you know, black hole of your email, you can approach it with a different mindset and then change things and the way you respond to people will be different. We've all gotten emails from you know people when you can tell they're grumpy on the other end. Right? Yes, it's so true. And no one wants like no one wants to bring back to that. So you know, changing, noticing how you feel, and then taking a breath and choosing, no, I don't want to feel this way. I'm going to smile. One one fun little fact that I researched today that I do want to share with your listeners, because it's one of my favorite things, is that when you smile, you can actually change your body's physiology. And there was a really cool study that was done with, uh, they had three different groups of people. So the first group of people, they came into the lab and they had to bite on a pencil. I'm looking, <laughs> I don't, I don't really, oh, here, I have an eyebrow pencil here. So <laughs> they bite like this. So it draws the corners of their mouth up towards their ears. So basically it's forcing a smile. Oh. The second group of people, <clears throat> So the second group of people, they came in and they had to put the pencil in front of their teeth, but behind their lips. So kind of like it forces a frown type shape. The third group of people, they came in and they didn't have anything. They just sat down. This, the, all three groups of people were shown the same videos. Some videos were happy, funny, uplifting videos. Some of the videos were sad or stress inducing or, you know, really upsetting videos. And then there were some neutral videos. And what they found was the group that had to bite on the pencil, so the people that were forced to smile, 
on a physiological level, they had a more positive reaction to the happy, funny videos. So endorphins, which are known as feel-good hormones, those were elevated in that group compared to the other two groups. And not only that, when they saw the sad or stressful or anxiety-causing videos, it actually helped to buffer those effects. So for example, cortisol, which is a stress hormone, it didn't, didn't have as negative effect on the body. It almost buffered that effect. And it was compared to the other two groups, a statistically significant difference. So knowing that in any moment, we can choose to smile. And whether we're smiling because we're actually happy, or we're just forcing that smile, our body doesn't know the difference. And on a physiological level, we can change things. And when we start to change that, we can, you know, we can allow that cascading change to extrapolate to more parts of our life. That is so awesome. It's really, it's really empowering to know. Smile. Yeah. It, it, <laughs> it's so simple. But at the end of the day, like one of my favorite Steve Jobs quotes is simple can be harder than complex. And you have to work really hard to get your thinking clean and to make it simple. But when you get there, you can move mountains. And, you know, at the end of the day, we all just want to be happier. If we really pay attention to our motives, to our intentions, to why we're doing what we're doing, most of the time it comes back to happiness and us wanting to feel happier, whether that be in our relationships, in our personal life, in our work life, whatever it is, that's what we want. And we can achieve it, you know, in, in a bunch of different ways, but simple things like practicing gratitude, physical activity. So a lot of the areas of our brain that are activated when we're physically active are the same areas of the brain that are activated when we're happy. So we get that same triggering neurological response in the brain when we exercise as well. It releases endorphins, like I said, those are the feel good hormones. One of the other things, and especially in the workplace, this could be a really great tool to increase not only our happiness, but the happiness of those around us in the workplace is doing nice things for other people. Oh, okay. And so what happens is this, this positive feedback loop is, is created. So if, say, for example, we're, you, you and I, we work together, and I notice that you're having a bad day. So I come over, and I bring you a coffee. And I'm like, hey, I just thought you might want a coffee. I feel good because I've done something for you. And it doesn't have to be a big extravagant thing. I could hold the door open for you. But I just choose to do something nice for you. So I feel good and I feel happy because I did something nice for someone else. You feel good because someone just did something nice for you. And especially if you were having a bad day, we all know what it's like to have that little thing that someone does that yeah. really lifts us up. What's also cool is if someone down the hall from us saw that, it makes them happier too. So anyone that's observing this act of kindness feels happier. So especially if you're a boss in a workplace or something like that, you can model that behavior for your staff or for the people that you work with. So you can do small, nice things for other people to not only increase your happiness, but theirs. And you're sort of being the change in your office place. You're making them happier and you're modeling that. So chances are over time, I bet if you start doing that, if you challenge yourself in the workplace to do one nice thing for one of your colleagues every single day, you'll start to notice that other people pick up that habit, whether it's subconscious or conscious that they do it. Fantastic. What's so it's a really, random acts of kindness. This is a ripple effect. Yes, absolutely. And it doesn't have to be big things. That's the key. Small things, thoughtful things that you can do. And we all can find a moment in our day to do something nice for someone else. Yes. And, and when we do, knowing that it has a positive effect, not only on our happiness, but on theirs as well, it's a really cool thing, especially if we're looking, you know, and improving happiness in the workplace. And we can't always control the circumstances, right? right? But we can control and we have total choice over how we react to them. So exactly. happiness is in our hands, literally, mm -hmm. and it's up to us to do those simple things every day to work that muscle of happiness, to get that own sense of empowerment, and to see the ripple effect, to notice that when we model this happy behavior, notice the effect that it has on everyone around us. Yeah. Wayne Dyer, one of the things that he told me that's one of my favorite lines that he said is, happiness is something that you are, and it comes from the way that you think. So knowing that innately in all of us, we have the capacity and the ability to make, to be happy and how we think gets us there, not actually what we do or what we achieve, but our thinking and our mindset. And when we can bring that to, to recognize that we're already there, we just have to connect in and find that happiness within us. Uh, you know, just knowing that we don't have to go out and find it. We can go in. 
That's awesome. Thank you so much, Jillian. You've given us so much to think about and you've given us really practical ways we can bring happiness more into our lives and into the workplace. I really want to thank you for sharing this research with us and look forward to hearing the outcomes of your, your PhD research. And, uh, you know, I think you're really bringing more happiness into the world by sharing this knowledge and this brilliance. So thank you. Thank you so much. And thank you everybody <laughs> for, for tuning in. And, you know, if we all can commit to watching this video and doing one nice thing for someone else, think of the ripple effect that that has. And so that's my hope that going out today that you can commit to, to doing one nice thing for someone else. That's awesome. Fantastic. So thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please subscribe and share it with your colleagues. And if you're looking for even more training and actionable advice on how to own your awesomeness in the workplace, head over to tanyadessa.com and join our global leadership tribe. Remember, own your awesomeness to be seen and heard in the workplace. See you soon.